Hi everyone, today's video is about solving quadratic equations by factoring. I'm going to give you, I think, six examples here. Two examples for the first form of quadratic equation, another two examples for the second form, and then one of each if we have a quadratic uh, trinomial. So let me just discuss this to you first. Um, the first form is where the leading term and the second term or the term with x are given. The second possibility or form of quadratic equation is if the leading term and the constant number are given. The third one is if we have a quadratic trinomial but the leading term equals 1. And then last but not the least, we have a quadratic trinomial wherein a is not equal to 1. Okay? So let me give you now ex um, and discuss to you those examples for these forms of quadratic equations. So the first one is this x squared plus 7x equals 0, the one on the left side. The first thing we will do here is to find the common factor between x squared and 7x. Now, we will be looking at these two things. The first one is the numerical coefficient. This is 1 and 7. I think there's no common factor to that. They are relatively prime. Of course, 1 is a common factor, but aside from that, there's none. The second that you're going to look at are the literal terms or the variables. So x squared and x. Obviously, x is common there, so I'll just write x, all right? And then what I will do next is divide these two terms by x. x squared divided by x is x. 7x divided by 7, I mean 7x divided by x is 7. Now, once you have those two factors, the next thing that you're going to do is to equate those two factors to 0. So x equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0, and then solve. Now we already have this, so we just need to solve x plus 7 equals 0. Minus 7, so x equals negative 7. So now that we have these two answers here. Second example, again look at the numerical coefficient first, 2 and 8. Common factor is 2. Literal coefficient second, or the variables, x squared and x, common is x. Write it down. Divide those two terms by the GCF, 2x. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x is just x. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. x divided by x is, you know, you'll just cancel that out. Equals 0. And then the next step is you will equate the two factors to 0. So 2x equals 0. x minus 4 equals 0. And solve for x. This one divided by 2, so x equals 0. This one you add 4, so x equals 4. Now, as you notice here, common answer between the two problems is 0. So, I think you always have that every time you have a quadratic equation in the form of x squared plus bx. You always, have, you always have x equals 0 as one of the two roots or solutions. All right, let's go to the next one and here. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. We normally use extracting the square root if the um, quadratic equation is in this form. But for the purpose of our lesson, which is factoring, I will use factoring here. Negative 3 and 9, common factor is negative 3 x squared and x, there's nothing there, there's no x, so x is not common. Um, x squared divided by, negative 3 x squared divided by negative 3 is x squared. 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3, equals 0. Now since negative 3 is, doesn't have a variable x, what I will do here next is divide both sides by negative 3. So x squared minus 3 equals 0. Then solve for x. Square equals 3. And then find the square root of that. So that's the answer. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's the decimal equivalent of square root of 3? Now, it really depends on your math teacher. Sometimes, in most cases, math teachers will just accept that. But in some cases, especially if it's a word problem, I think your math teacher will ask you the approximate equivalent of the square root of negative 3, I mean square root of 3 rather. Now let's go to the fourth example, the one here on the right side. So 4 and 36 common is 4. 36 doesn't have an x, so 4 is only the GCF of this expression. 
4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. Negative 36 divided by 4 is negative 9. All right. Again, the next step here is divide both sides by 4. So this is just, you know, extracting the um, square root. Or you can use also factoring here if you want. Uh, because this is difference of two squares, but I would just use extracting the square root because I think you're familiar with that Here you go find the square root So it's positive negative three um, So that's it for this example. Let's go to the third one, which is a quadratic trinomial Now this one is easy um, if a is equal to 1 in a quadratic equation, the first thing you got to do is focus on the constant number negative 24. So the next step is we need to find two numbers that when multiplied, the answer is negative 24. Since that's negative 24 and we're looking for two numbers, that means one is positive and one is negative. Now to make the... Um, solution easier what we will do here is this one so we have two numbers right one is positive and one is negative the next question is which one is going to be negative and which one is positive that depends on your second term so if the second term is positive one of those two numbers the larger one should be positive for example 24 times negative 1 right 24 1 24 is larger than 1 24 should be positive. Okay? Next possibility, 12 and 2. 12 is greater than 2. 12 is positive. 2 is negative. Next, um, 6 and 4. 6 is larger than 4. So, 6 is positive. 4 is negative. 8 and 3 is also negative 24. Um... So 8 is greater than 3, so 8 is positive, 8 and um, negative 3, or 3 is negative. So now I have the list. The next thing that we will do is to find which pair will give us a sum of um, positive 5. So I will add this, add, add, add. This is 23, this is 10, this is 2, this is 5. That's what we need. So these are the numbers we're looking all right, so that's x plus 8 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then the next step is to equate um, both factors to 0, right? And then solve for x. So x equals 3. Here, x equals negative 8. All right, last example in this one, <clears throat> our a is greater than 1, or not equal to 1, rather. So we have a 3 here. Now, we will not apply the procedure that we used in the previous example because we have um, a numerical coefficient of a that is not equal to 1. And the method that we will be using here is what we call the x method. So in the x method, on top, the number on top is the product of a and c. Let's start with that. So a, c, product of that, multiply 3 and negative 10, that's negative 30. Okay. So here is just the b. Numerical coefficient of x is just 1. There you go. Now, for the two regions here, they will represent the answers. And the first one is x plus, right? We'll find that number there over a, which is 3. Okay? Take note, this is a, the denominator. So x plus, we will look for a number here and then over a. Okay, so what are those two numbers? So this one and that one. What are those two numbers? Now that depends on this, negative 30, and also on 1. So the first thing that we will do, okay, negative 30, just like what we did in the previous example, we need to find two numbers that when multiply, the answer is negative 30. Here we go again. That's negative 30. 
One is positive and one is negative. So which one is negative and which one is positive? Again, that depends on the middle term. Since the middle term is positive, then the higher number is positive. If it's negative, then the higher number should be negative. All right? So for example, 30 and 1. 30 is higher than 1. So 30 should be positive and 1 should be negative. Next, 10 and 3 is also equal to 30. 10 is higher than 3. So 10 is positive because the middle term, the B, is positive. Next, um, 6 and 5. So 6 is higher than 5. So 6 is positive. 5 should be negative. Okay, we can stop here for a while. And then the next step is we will add. And the question is, which one will give us a sum of 1? This is 29. This is 7, this 1. There you go. We found it. 6 and negative 5. So we'll put the 6 here. Let me just erase this question mark. 6 here. And then negative 5 here. Okay, question. 6 divided by 3. 2, correct. So this is x plus 2. One of the two factors. Next. Um... Negative 5 over 3, can we simplify that? Nope. So we can actually write it down like this. Yeah, we can do that. Yep. Now, some teachers will tell you that, you know, we're looking for the factor. So um, one possibility is this, you know, 3x minus 5, right? So these are the two factors. Now, I'm a math teacher, and normally what I will tell my students if we're solving the equation, we're not looking for the factor. So the factors are this, x plus 2 and 3x minus 5. But we're solving for the value of x here. I will keep the negative 5 over 3. Okay? And the reason behind that is because the next step here is we will equate both to 0. Right? So that's the first answer. And here, since... It's not like this. The next step here is simply add 5 over 3. There you go. So if your factor is 3x plus 5, or minus 5 rather, you will still have the same answer, x equals 5 over 3, but you will do this first, right? So I'm just giving you the possibilities here divided by 3 and that will give you 5 over 3 the same so it really depends on your math teacher okay just ask your math teacher uh, what is his or her preference okay so that's it thank you for watching and I hope you learned something please don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you and have a nice day bye bye